Hi, welcome to The Stitch. I'm Pam. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to talk about The Stitch and we're going to talk about current topics in quilting. We're going to talk about techniques and we're going to talk about our fun stories about quilting. So, so uh, our episodes come out monthly right now and they're mm -hmm. complemented by virtual sew-ins that also happen monthly as well as weekly podcasts. Um, and you can always learn more about all of that at thestitchtvshow.com. And they normally come out the last Friday of the month. Pretty much. So TGIF. Something to do every month the last Friday. It's very exciting. Every week. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, between podcasts right. and fun stuff, stuff. Tips and tricks videos. Right. So the Stitch TV. So what are we going to talk about today? Because like we have other things to talk about. <gasps> Lots of things. So today we're going to talk about our trip to the Chattanooga AQS show. So fun. It was so fun. So, well, we had to carpool separate, but we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> Uh, round robin quilts and uh, how do you pick a sewing machine or long arm machine? Let's get started. Okay, so we went to AQS Chattanooga, which is American Quilt Society, and they have a big, <laughs> I had to think about that. I don't know why. I Acronyms are our friends. I know, they should be. So anyway, so we went to AQS Chattanooga. We had a great time. We did carpool separately because I had to go someplace else and talk on Saturday. Because of reasons. Because of reasons. Well, I went to talk at another guild. So it was fun. It was great. I did a lecture at another guild. It was great fun. But so we went to AQS Chattanooga. We drove up separately, but we still kind of carpooled because we <laughs> chatted on the phone on the way up. Hey, hey girl, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? And then I got lost in the parking. Their parking deck is crazy. Oh, I got told, oh, full, don't even try. So yeah. I went like jacked up across the street. She drove right by me. I was like, what? And then I had to use the Google Maps walking app to find the conference center. And then it was like, app? there was like, yeah, you just set it on walking instead of driving. I did not know this. Oh, yeah. Girl. That's good to know. I will hook you up. That's, how, that's okay. good to know. <laughs> so. I wish I had known that there. And so anyway, go yeah, ahead. So then I went like the sneaky back entrance, and then I thought, oh, goodness, I have to remember how I walked in this conference. <laughs> it's a big place. Yes. Huge place. And lots of quilts. Lovely quilts. We couldn't um, film there because they have rules about filming and stuff, but I did ask them for next year. <gasps> I asked them, so we have to go get approval and stuff and have official yay. And they're like, what do you want to film? I'm like, cool quilt stuff. You know, so anyway, but we couldn't film, but we took a lot of pictures and we'll share those online so you can see them on Instagram and stuff. So what did we do at the show? Well, we walked around and looked at quilts. Exactly. We ha they have a main exhibit and then they had three special exhibits as well, plus all the vendors. I think they had more than three. Three special exhibits? They, they had, had Wicked. They had the Red and White exhibit. Oh, I was thinking. They had Sakwa. They had the New Zealand Australia exhibit. And they had... Teachers. Well, quilts. I was thinking of the three special ones in the separate room. The Wicked was in the main area. Oh, right. You're right. That's what I was thinking. Of. You're right. Yeah. And then they had the museum exhibit. Yes. Which is really cool. The National Quilt Museum every year does a contest. And they, they put out a block. And then they let all the... And it's uh, for prize money, too. Oh, yeah. So you... You look at the block. I think this year, the next block is the New York Beauty. And then in 2017, it's the Flying Geese. And so they put out a block and then they ask quilters to design quilts. And they compete for unique design, reinvent that block. Yeah. And it was amazing. So this year it was nine patch. And it was, what can you do with a nine patch? You would be shocked. It was not your normal everyday nine patch. There was one quilt that I think the, the, the white glove hostess that was there uh, must have thought I was nuts because I kept walking up to it and looking in clothes and then backing up. And, and I don't know if she thought I just needed new glasses. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I was there for a good five, ten minutes just looking at one quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you need help? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it was a great show. And then we saw the um, the main exhibit, which was really the winners. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. My favorite one was the octopus. If you haven't seen that one online go online and we'll link to it online go look at the octopus the quilting on it was incredible well it's it so really many, neat the Details. special techniques and... yeah and then one oh so one of the winning quilts we could not figure out how they got the quilting done to stand out like normally when you micro quilt it, it you know it puts that quilting in the background and anything you're not quilting stands out, right? So this one they had micro quilted and it was standing out. You know what it was? I found out. Trapunto. It was micro quilted huh. trapunto. It was incredible. Yeah. It was really good. I, we'll we'll I, show that one too. I might have gotten in trouble because well we yeah, couldn't we find anyone with white gloves and they're like, well 
we don't want to see whatever you're going to do. And so I, I didn't touch the quilt. I touched the curtain against where it was hanging and I pulled it back and ducked back. They're like, don't do that. It's going to collapse. I'm like, that is some shoddy craftsmanship <laughs> yeah, exactly. on your quilt stands if it's going to collapse. <laughs> no, so, it wasn't. But, but it didn't. And right. we answered the question. It did. Hey, you know what else? I mean, AQS is amazing. It was a great show. There was lots of vendors. We got to um, shop. Pam and I shopping together is hilarious. One, because she... I got the <laughs> RBF. Yes, she does. And I don't. <laughs> so, so we could be walking by somebody and they like stop and talk to me because I'm smiling at them. Hey, how's it going? And Pam's like three booths down. Bye. I, and I look thing. around, and I look around, and I'm trapped talking to somebody, you know, trying to put lotion on my hand or telling me I need arthritis shoes or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm talking to these people, I'm like, I don't need orthopedics. Thanks, though. Appreciate you. <laughs> and Pam's three boots down. I'm thinking, how did I get stuck here? It's all this. Yes. And so she tells me I got to improve my face. So... Maybe if you run into us, I'll be working on my face. But still come talk to me because I'll talk to you. I will talk to you. Okay, so strange thing. We just got done shoving cupcakes. Giant cupcakes oh, in our a, faces. Okay, but this is a tradition. So we go to the show together, and then we have our traditional cupcake. It's tradition because we've done it so, twice. Right. Well, how many times do you have to do it for it to be a tradition? I don't know, every year. Twice. Twice. That's so now it's a tradition. So we had our giant cupcakes. Chocolate, of course, so, you know. Dainty. It was Ladies very that good. we are. And if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see the pics. <laughs> so we had just wiped our faces off. And then I see two women like walking towards us. And I thought, oh, maybe they're going to sit next to us because there were some empty chairs. We were chairs. in comfy chairs, too. They had comfy chairs. Walk up and they asked me, are you Pam? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yes. <laughs> and so cute, right? uh, we got recognized, which it was we kind pretty... of had an unofficial bet. Like, Lynn's like, we're going to get recognized. I'm like, Psh, no. <laughs> Nobody is going to know us. <laughs> Except. So I've been podcasting five years, That's right. and I have, within the last you year, have a fan started. Base. I have, I have a fan base. You, you I got, have, you've got fan girls. People. My people, <laughs> uh, and I've been posting more pictures between Instagram and right. all. So I, my face is now more associated. With, and then, it was hilarious. And then they, they, oh, hi, are you Pam? Oh, hi, yes. So shout out to to Gail and her friend Jane. Right. Jean. And then, thanks for recognizing them. <laughs> and then they turn and look, and you're Lynn, and you're the Stitch. Like, yes, yes, we yes. are. And then we're like, thank goodness we had just wiped our faces from the cup. <laughs> yes, we didn't have icing, like, smeared. You know, but we didn't do the kid smash thing in no. eating the cupcakes. Or the wedding thing. No, we're not. No, we didn't do we that. Won't, we will never do that. So we had a great time at the show. We saw all the vendors. We saw, oh, let's talk about the uh, Australian New Zealand the, no, exhibit. In living color. In living color. Not just it? Australian New Zealand. I saw some UK. I saw oh, I didn't some realize US. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought it was All just, um, no, it organized by a woman named Brenda in Australia. And then I got the special heads up about it. Um, if you remember from our first episode, uh, Miss Lottie, AKA the Mad Quilt Lady on the Instagrams and the tweets. Um, she, uh, has a quilt in that exhibit. So it was shout gorgeous. out to Apua, which is on the North Island. Cause it I was a it dragonfly. It was great. Yeah, it was gorgeous. really neat. Yeah. And what I loved about that exhibit especially was that all the quilts were the same dimension. So you really got to showcase design, right. color, you know, all those things because every, you saw them all stacked side by side and they grouped some of the colors together, which was, was nice. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. I thought it was one of the best exhibits there, For honestly, sure. Yeah. of all the special exhibits there. I mean, and they were all great, but that one was probably my favorite yeah. of the ones there. And we want to go to New Zealand. Or, and, or Australia. Australia. Yeah. So shout Australia. out to Australia. Because we got in trouble for that last yeah. one. We had, we had some, some comments about what up with Australia, guys. Right. <laughs> we love Australia. <laughs> so, so Pam had to leave early. So we saw the, oh, and we saw my quilt. I had a quilt hanging at the show. So we'll link to a picture in that, too. And it was great. It was fun experience. I'd never had a quilt at AQS, so. I thought that was really neat oh, yeah. kind of thing. And it was kind of fun. You know, we were, oh, we went over to see my quilt and Pam took a picture of me in front of your quilt, as you do. Because if you have a quilt at a national show, take your picture in front of it. You need to. So anyway, so we're standing there and some stranger comes up and goes, oh, is that your quilt? I'm like, yes, it is. She goes, I want to take your picture. I was like, really? <laughs> I was kind of... <laughs> so thank you, stranger, for taking my picture. I thought it was fun. <laughs> Although I did want to do something goofy in the picture, like it's mine or something. Yeah, but I didn't. I was, I was, I tried. To you play were very it. professional. I tried to play it cool, which is really not <laughs> normal kind of it's stuff. It's my quilt. <laughs> it's my quilt. Yeah, I didn't do that. So, um, 
try to play it cool. And... All right. So what we would recommend, guys, um, if there's a quilt show or a quilt exhibit or anything near you, take it in. Go yes. with some friends. Can make it more fun or fun. Have a great time. Fun. It's so much fun. And and bring your wallet. Bring your bring your wallet. <laughs> yes. Bring maybe a budget. A budget would be good because uh, there's lots of stuff to buy and oh, yeah. see and do and all that kind of stuff. And it'll be back in Chattanooga next year. So that's exciting, too. Cool. So uh, Pam had to leave early. So after that, I went to a special uh, quilt store called Spool, which is in Chattanooga. And they had an exhibit of uh, the Game of Quilt, which was a takeoff of the Game of Thrones. So it was all these uh, quilts that had to do with the Game of Thrones. And they gave me a prize for coming. And I haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what they gave me. So I thought I'd open it. And it says, winner is coming, make quilts. I thought that was fun. If you're a Game of Thrones <laughs> fan, you totally get that. So, um, oh, look, they gave me a cute little charm thing. Isn't that cute? Oh, cute little two and a half inch squares? Yeah, little two and a half inch squares. Fancy. Oh, those are the, the peppered cotton, I think. <gasps> peppered cotton, love peppered cotton. Okay. Okay. Well, we have to talk about other stuff, so um, we'll get right to that in a second. Well, welcome back. Our next topic is round robin quilts, which you may know, hey, there's a quilt behind us. And this is a round robin quilt that I recently participated in, not called round robin because there's birds on it. That was just serendipitous. So a round robin quilt <laughs> is where you get a group of people and you start with a medallion or a center block, and then that gets traded off to the next person and they add a row and then the next person, it gets passed around in a group of people and they each add something. And then when it gets back to you, you have your top. Yeah, so this one was organized through kind of an online chatty group called Twilters, which is unofficial. And um, that sprang about from a lot of quilting podcasts like mine and their listeners. And we all kind of chat on Twitter. We have a Facebook group now. Uh, and we had one podcaster organized for us um, and set us up into three groups. And then I was in group B. And so I would pass my center block, which was this one that's on point here with the teeny tiny triangles, which is not as impressive as it looks simply because they were little, you know, buffalo bits from another project. So I just had them. Wait, thought, okay. So, but she calls any teeny tiny leftover stuff buffalo bits. Yeah, I think we talked about that in the first episode. Did we? we? I, don't, it's, I don't remember. It's, a blur. it's been so long ago. So when you, <laughs> if someone says, oh, make a flying geese unit and you start with a rectangle and two squares and you sew and then they're like, oh, trim. And then I'm like, well, that's perfectly good fabric. So I'll take another little stitch there before I trim and then I have a little extra half square triangle whereas but, I go oh that's perfectly good trash I'm not gonna do and anything then you else. hand it to me to I make do. a challenge I hand out it of. to her so so but so these were all my little bits left over from something in 2012 I think wow, um, and I had it I have like well yeah three years that's a long process well, fit in a drawer when the drawer okay. gets full it's time to make stuff out of it okay <laughs> So mine didn't have a bird on it originally, and then, so when I sent it to Molly, she added these setting triangles, and then it went to Allison, who added these flying geese. Which are cute. The flying geese cute, are super cute. Super tiny, and I'm so glad Allison added hot pink, which really needed, because all I included was lime green and some turquoise and some orange with it. Now, <laughs> Allison passed it on to Sally, who added the birds in the nine patches, and the birds were delightful because it drew from the bird fabric here. And then it went to Kathy, who added the outer border. And so Sally very kindly included some additional bird applique. Um, she had done, um, I think it's an AccuQuilt dye. Is that an AccuQuilt dye? I think so. I oh, know that's it was a dye. Awesome. Yeah, so she had sent along extra birds. Well, and I was really... like, well, I'm going to put a bird on this. <laughs> Again, in the so center. So you just added the center. I did. All the rest of them were there. Yes, all of the rest of them were there. And then uh, quilt as desired, which is a maddening phrase. Oh, don't you hate that phrase? Ooh. Quilt as a desired. I really struggle with quilt as desired. So, I think we need to know what the desire is. Well, it's your desire. Like, yeah, I don't quilt it as your know. desire. I quilt it as mine. I thing. know, but that's hard. I don't know. That's the hard part of the quilting process yeah. for me. Because I stare at it forever. I'm like, oh, what do I do here? Well, I've been kind of on an orange peel kick. So here in the nine patch shapes and um, in the triangles, I just sort of loop around the inside, which kind of draws out the shape some, but doesn't take too much away from it. And it didn't take very long. <laughs> and it doesn't take very long, which That's is a good delightful. One. It's delightful. So uh, now if you're trying to find a round robin group on your own, lots of times it works better if it's local. So the group that I was in was California, Chicago, oh, wow. North so Carolina. Oh wow, so you had to ship it all. Yeah. Wow, that's more time. So yeah. no wonder it took you a year. 
Well, and we, we had a little bit of life happen in the middle there. Oh, um, she does you, yeah, which you got to be understanding and you got to be accepting of that. Um, so, how long did you have to do? Like, so if I get it, how long do I have to do before I? I think I'd send it on. Our time frame was between like six and eight weeks. Oh, that's not bad. And you know, sometimes life happened and it got you know stretched <laughs> out a bit, but that's okay because uh, I think we're pretty close to everyone having their final now. Um, but I know if you're more concerned, like, ooh, I want to make sure we get it in time, then maybe try to do one locally. Either uh, lots of times quilt shops will do right. kind of a meet, and, or not a meet and greet, but like at uh, the one near us, they do quilt to your wilt. And oh, so right. So you, you could, could be really easy oh, if you're yeah. meeting with people every week. I mean, the problem there is you week. kind of want it to be secret. So I just oh, knew yeah. I passed my center block and I didn't have any idea what it's going to look like when I got it. I was like, well, I hope I like it. And of course, I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, but you kind of want to keep it secret. So maybe you wouldn't all work on it there at the, the quilt until you wilt. But you could meet the people there and then you know you see them and there's some you accountability. You could pass like, it off in trash bags. Quilt. Although, don't put quilts in trash bags. <laughs> Seriously. No, the reason you don't want to put quilts in trash bags <laughs> is because you could throw them away. Yes, that's happened to friends of ours. I know. That's why I'm saying don't put them in trash bags. Yeah. Put them in, you know, cute. Make a pillowcase. Or, yeah, like a something, yard of fabric. something cute. Or that you even, go, this looks nice. Let's not throw this away. Let me look in it. Oh, there's a quilt. Yes. Yeah, so don't put them in trash bags. Trash bags. I, no, seriously, my cousin, one year after Christmas... She packed up, they were at my aunt's house visiting, and so she packed up all the presents and put them in trash bags, and they got thrown away. All the Christmas presents. <laughs> so don't put your quilt in the trash bag, because you could throw it away. Seriously. Okay. I mean, if, I, I mean, maybe don't. other people are more organized than I am. <laughs> like, oh, that looks like trash. <laughs> Just throw it away. It's not true. Now, there's kind of a, a, an alternate take on round robin. There's something called row robin. Which, because the, the with a, a round robin, like as you get further towards finishing the quilt, you have bigger thing, bigger rounds to do. Where if you do a row robin, then everyone kind of has the same size thing oh, to do yeah, every time. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Because if you're doing there's a, a little round less robin, math. Yeah, because this is just a wall hanging. But if you were doing a queen size quilt Ooh. and you had the last row, you're putting borders on the whole thing. But that I mean, everyone else does too. Especially if you're piecing it. Not that I don't love a good piece border. Yeah. They are actually stunning. She's a checkerboard fiend. I am. I like checkerboards and piano keyboarders. They are awesome. And I'll show you some of my quilts. I mean, we'll hang them up and look Whereas at them. I'm like, one and done. <laughs> like Because again, again, no, it's going to make an awesome quilt for it, no matter what the border looks like. Yes. Well, yeah, but you could have fancy borders and it'd be still good at a quilt for it. True. Just saying. Okay. I like a good, I've been, I've been on, a, on a piano key kick. Yeah. I really have. So, so but, um, so the row robin, uh, everyone kind of makes a starting row and then you pass and then you're just like, oh, and the next row has applique. And even with this, you get kind of um, guidelines on, well, make the next thing six inches and then add a four inch one if you're doing in the round. But if you're doing a row, then it's always the same width, which is nice. You're not having right. to guess, like, is that 58? Is that 32? How big is that? Yes. Um, and you're, it, the math's usually a little easier. I actually, well, it wasn't a row robin. But we, uh, a group of, a group that I'm involved in, um, one of our members is leaving, so we decided to make a quilt for her, so we each did a row. And so I did a row, and then we put it together, and I actually got to quilt it. <gasps> yes. And we're giving it away soon, so I can talk about it now. I, I wouldn't have talked about it had she not. Secrets. I know she's going to get it before this goes out. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. cool. So I was very, but, but when you do that, Sometimes that's intimidating because it was just like make a row out of batiks. Yeah. So, but I did applique. Yeah, I love yeah. her because applique is hard. Yeah, being in groups like this really sometimes pushes you outside your design comfort zone. It does. My rut is very comfortable. <laughs> it is. I like my rut, uh, but I would I would get <laughs> get the fabric and I would think, oh, I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> Didn't oh, you no. do one with horses? I remember I did, us yeah. talking about you did one with horses. She had, so. um, she has quite the collection of horse fabric, and so she sent, I think, two different ones. And and then because I was like, horses are all right. I mean, there's horse farm around the corner from my house, but in the fabric, <laughs> there was other barnyard animals. So I, on my row or my round, I went and I fussy cut like all the cats. <laughs> I'm like cat here and a cat there and a cat there, and I'm like, mm, how about that cat? <laughs> <laughs> well, every bar, every good barn needs a cat. Yes, this, because this, they keep away the mice. This barn had multiple cats. I think I did highlight some sheep too. 
a shout out again to New Zealand. Just that. Yeah, really. <laughs> We're getting in so much trouble with Australia again. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, but uh, with the road that I did, it was great. Like, we had a good time, and it was easy. And we just did it in a couple months, though. Yeah. So some can take longer, depending upon. Oh, yeah. Well, and especially if y'all are all in the same place, then it's a lot easier to hand off. You don't have to be like, oh, and it's a week in the mail. And, yeah, and exactly. Yeah. But we will have links on uh, Round Robins that we have heard about that are going on. Or... Um, so, yeah, it, trying to find them online. Uh Usually you want to have some experience with the group before you dive in. I know that there are different bees set up on Flickr, um, and there's even some other um, coordinating groups that do that. So we'll put a couple links on places to find those if y'all are interested. Yes. So, and they're fun. You should do them. I think anytime you get together with friends and quilt, make stuff in a group, it's interesting. Get outside your rut. And get outside your rut, yes. Okay. Expand your tent of knowledge. Your, you mean your quilt fort of knowledge? Your quilt fort. Expand your quilt fort of knowledge. Just get another card table. Throw out a wing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with our last topic in just a bit. That's right. So we got a question from oh, right. our, our last episode uh, from Lori. Hi, Lori. Who uh, wanted to know what you should consider when buying a long arm. And I thought, well, I don't have one, but Lynn does. So let's ask her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What did I consider when, when I bought my long arm? Um, the first thing you have to look at is cost because some of them are more expensive than others. Um, the second thing is ease of use. Some are much heavier than others. And so what I did when I bought mine is I went to one of the national quilt shows where they have all the long arm dealers set up. And I went and drove one and then I went and drove another one and then I went and drove another one and then the one that drove for me best is the one that I picked but that said I also did a lot of homework in that I took classes with long arms mm. um, and I also rented long arms at a local quilt store to quilt some quilts to make sure I would like it because it's an expensive investment and with um, if you have any kind of mobility issues and just realize that you're going to be standing up and kneeling down and looking up at your quilt quite a lot when you're you're stitching it, especially when you're getting used to the tension mm -hmm. and getting all that right. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you're in good enough shape that you can do that kind of stuff. So that's what I looked at. I also, my long arm is one of the larger long arms that have the width throat space. So you would look at that. Um, I I don't know. I love my long arm. I love Clementine. She's very nice. <laughs> That's the name of my long arm. I named her Clementine. Um, but I don't know that I would buy as wide a throat space as I did. I bought the widest throat space because you can do a 12-inch block on point. And I thought, well, the wider the throat space, the, easy, the less passes you have mm -hmm. before you row your quilt. So you get it done faster. Um, I have kind of changed my quilting style. I don't do quilts for other people, and I do a lot of small micro type quilting. So I'm not doing micro quilting way out here. I'm doing micro quilting right here. So I would I don't know that I would need yeah. that wide of a throat space, which if that's what your style is, you could get by with a less width of a machine, throat space mm -hmm. width, and it could cost you less money. So I would look at that as maybe what kind of style do you do? Yeah. Do you quilt from the back? You know, you, we, and from the back of the machine. <laughs> that had a different connotation yeah, in my did. head. <laughs> you quilt from the back of the machine, which means you're doing more pantographs and stuff like yeah. that. Then how wide do you want your pantographs? That's going to depend, you know, look at your throat space as well. But find, and the other thing I would consider too is local support. Uh, is there a quilt store in your area that sells that machine? Mm -hmm. Then they have experts that come in and do classes there. Um, and I think that's a good network community to be a part of. Um, and do you like the rep? Exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. If you want to work with people who, I mean, this is an expensive machine. A and I'll tell you the company that I, that I bought mine from when I call to get help in their their help service department, they know who I am. They have notes on what kind of thread I use because I told them what kind of thread I use. And I told them like how fast I stitch, where I set my mm -hmm. stitch regulator and all that kind of stuff. And they are like, oh, we see you do this. 
I'm like, well, yes, yes, I do. And I'm like, how did you know that? She goes, well, it's in my notes. And it was from the previous time I called. So, yeah, I thought that was very, you know, definitely good customer service. So you want to make sure that. I just, I, I would... My rep is not close, which I think that would be benefit. I would like that better. But there are some great, you know, reps out there from yeah. a lot of different companies. So definitely look at that stuff. Yeah. The thing to consider, too, with a long arm, because there's there's multiple classes of them, not just by throat space, but whether they're meant for um, occasional home use versus you're going to start a business long arm right. for other people. Right. There's yeah. definitely a difference in the quality of the engineering and how things are put together. Um, and even with sewing machines, you know, there's there's uh, a big box retail home machine versus right. a professional a grade. I said Bernina. You did. I have Bernina. I have Janome. Yeah. And mine says professional right there on the machine. So yeah. clearly I'm legit. I, yeah, I'm legit. <laughs> um, but but I think anytime you're buying a sewing machine, you definitely want to research that stuff oh, yeah. and how you use it. So if you're setting up a long arm business, you know there are some classes where you can go. I know in the company I bought from, where they show you how to set up a business. They show you, you know, a business plan and you know all that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. it's an expensive investment. And here's my big tip on it: once you buy a long arm. Do not, under any circumstance, go and drive anybody else's long arm because you've already spent your money. <laughs> don't, don't do it. So when I go to a show, like when we were at, at Chattanooga, I didn't drive any other long arm at all because I'm like, I have Clementine at home and she could get jealous. And I, I don't want to do that to her. She's, she's good to me. It took us a while to become friends because it's getting used to the machine. I think oh, there's yeah. a big learning curve with the long arm that I don't know a lot of people expect they think oh we'll just i'm just gonna go up and start drawing yeah and i don't have a computer on mine oh that's another thing you should consider because if you want to add a computer to your long arm you have to buy a certain level Mm -hmm. because not all long arms can take the computer component and you don't have to buy the computer component from the company you buy the long arm there are computer components that can be added to a variety of different long arm dealers so i mean models so Think about that if that's a consideration you have. But what about regular machines? Like not long arm, but just your domestic, regular, domestic machine. What do I? Okay, I do have three that I, I that is important to me uh, that I look for when I buy a domestic machine. Is color one of them? No, but I do have an orange Bernina. Color is important. <laughs> it does not affect the function of the quilt. But... It makes you happy. And, uh, you know, I'm the only one in the area that has an orange Bernina. So when I take it into V service, they're like, oh, it's Lynn's because <laughs> nobody else has orange. But anyway, um, that's not one of the things I would say is important. For me, for me, it's important needle up down. Okay. Yes. You have to have needle up down. Not just with the hand wheel, like no, an no, actual no. function. A function where and it stays down. Because I do, I do a lot of applique, so I want it to, the needle to stay down while I'm moving stuff. And I like the knee lift, and not all machines have a knee lift. So mine has a knee lift, and I don't, I'm kind of non-committal about it until I'm at, oh. while I'm at home, and then I go somewhere where it's set up slightly different, and then the knee lift's at a different angle, and I'm like, Rah! you know, and then I turn into the dad from A Christmas Story <laughs> in my head. <laughs> So yes, <laughs> what's that line? A uh, 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 cloud of of curse words would still hang over Lake Michigan today. Yes, <laughs> that's where you are over the retreat center. Over yes. to, over Lake Alatuna today. As she <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then so needle up down okay. is important. Knee lift is important to me, and I like mine in a table, which isn't the machine, but I'm like spend the extra bucks and get a table. Yeah, when I got my machine, um, I got the table with it. But not every machine comes with like the manufacturer as the, the same one as the manufacturer of the sewing machine makes the table. But there are a number of um, smaller tables that you can get the custom insert. So you set it That's down, and this, this, whether it's like a medium hole or a big hole, depending on the size of the machine. It is. And then they do like an acrylic, like a see through yep. thing that fits right on top. So you get a nice flat bed experience, which is important, particularly if you're doing applique and you want everything to be level, or if you're doing free motion quilting, as I do on a domestic machine. Yeah, I'm scared of that. I'm not scared. I just don't do it very often. But I, I want the flat table. Yeah. Because it, it, it supports the quilt better, especially when you're, and I do, I do more applique. I do a lot of applique, I think, than you do. 
Yeah, but now one other thing to consider that's not on your list is what's the visibility around where the needle is, um, oh, especially because point. if it's embedded in a table, you don't want to be all ducking down trying to look, you know, at what's going on under the needle. You want to be able to see it. So really take a look and see, because there's some machines that have a much bigger, you know, machinery kind of built around where the needle is. And if visibility, especially if you're doing free motion applique, things like that, very important to consider. I guess I haven't thought of that. Well, like, because, that's not something I've... Well, I've because you haven't noticed that you've had a problem with it. But if you probably, are like, oh, I can't maybe see that's anything it. going on down here, then you notice. Yeah, but I, I like a table. And I even, because we do a lot of sewing together at, at sew-ins, at quilt stores and with different groups and stuff. I even take a, I, I bought the mm -hmm. acrylic table that you can take. I have a travel machine. Mine came with, though. My my one yeah. that I keep at home. But oh, I did it real well. Mine came with too, but it was small, so I bought the bigger one because yeah. I like. I don't know. I just like. Well, that. and what I discovered because my travel machine is a featherweight, is that the uh, extension table for my Janome fits my featherweight. <gasps> it's just at a different height, so oh. I just I gotta I gotta go redneck engineer a solution <laughs> to lift up the featherweight. <laughs> I got I gotta put it on some blocks. <laughs> And leave it out in the driveway. It's like, <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you my idea. So this is my idea. So uh, here's the deal. So you should always cover your sewing machine so that dust can get in it. So I'm in the process, and I just bought the pattern of making campers to go. I have several sewing machines to go over all my sewing machines so that I can have a redneck trailer park of my sewing machine. I think it's funny. You don't think it's funny? <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're going to be back right after this. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back. We, we have another exciting challenge, and this time it's not just for Lynn and I. Oh, good. Yay. Okay, so we talked about our road trip yes, to Chattanooga. we did. And I have also been doing some traveling for work. And uh, one of the things that happens in the summer here in the U.S. with quilt shops is something called the row-by-row row experience. And yes. so each quilt shop, there's kind of a theme set up for the year. And each quilt shop designs a row, kind of like, not a row robin, but they, everyone designs a row. Uh, and it's, I think it's eight inches by, I don't know, 20, 36, 42, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know, some number, hike. Uh, <laughs> Sports ball. <laughs> That's all I know. Uh, anyway, so row by row experience, and each of the quilt shops has the opportunity to design a little custom license plate oh, with right, a little yes. fun saying. And so when and I was very collectible, like we've got a friend who I, I'm telling you, she's been to 83 shops she has this summer, and she's and they're trading them. Like I went to the last uh, meeting to plan next year's guild meetings, and they had people with these on the table going, hey, I'll take these for $5, I'll get extra ones, da da da. It's like crazy. They, they got a problem. No, no, it's fun. I look forward to seeing what they make out of them. Yes, I do too. <gasps> Which brings us to our challenge for okay. Lynn and I. So, yeah, because she made this up, I don't know what we're doing. So, when I was in New York, I went to the quilt shop there, the City Quilter, and their license plate says, if you see something, sew something. So, Lynn, this is for you to make something, and it's orange. Oh, yay, because that's important. Orange is important. Except in sewing machines, apparently. I know. I... Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, I have one for myself that I got from one of the Wheeler Dealer ladies in the back alley. No. <laughs> you got it. Well, it's from Spool, which is the, the shop that I went to at AQS Chattanooga. It's got a bad word on it, which I can't say because we're on the air. But, so, <laughs> beep. <laughs> so, Lynn and I have these license plates, and our challenge is to make something by the time of our next episode. Oh, my God. But, because we have international viewers, as we know, from the uprising in Australia. <laughs> Our challenge. The Australia Rebellion. Yes. Hashtag Australian Rebellion. <laughs> so our challenge to you all out there in the Stitch community, show us a trip inspired quilt that you've made. Or maybe it's a project. Maybe you made luggage tags. Maybe you made a Kindle cover or some other e-reader cover. Oh, that's a good idea. So some kind I'm of... sitting here trying to think what I'm going to make. Those are good ideas. Nice. Now you know. Now I know. Now you know. So any uh, project that you've made inspired by a trip or a road trip or anything like that, maybe it's license plates if you did row by row experience in the U.S. And we're going to have a linky set up on the stitchtvshow.com. Um, and what that is, it's a little widget on the website. We'll have a blog post dedicated to this. Uh, and you just say, add my link. And so you can add an Instagram post. You can add a blog post you can add uh, something from Flickr anything that has a URL with it and if you guys Facebook? don't have Facebook 
I okay. think. Yes, as long as it, your permissions are set to share publicly. Oh, good. Good to know. Uh, so add that to the linky. Um, and if you guys have trouble, you can email us at, at info at the stitch TV show dot com uh, and we can get it in there for you. Um, so show us your stuff. We have a special prize. Oh, good. And we will ship internationally. Good. Yeah. To make the Australian. So we have to get rebellion. this made. And, and we're revealing it on the next episode. Yes. So, so I'll reveal mine and you'll reveal yours. And the deadline for everyone that wants to participate is October 30th. Uh, we'll close the linky then. Okay. And then what we're going to do is kind of take a top, I don't know, five to ten out of that and then put it to a vote. So we're not. Oh, so we'll vote on who's going to get vote. the prize. And that'll be on the website as well. So okay. Well. Sounds or good. maybe in the Facebook group. We'll figure out okay, how, how to we do can that. Vote there. So, I think we can. exciting times. Very good. So, make something. I know you probably traveled some place this summer. And make something and show us what you've done. Yeah. That'd be great fun. So, Lynn, have, have we had help with today's episode? We have had help with today's episode. We want to give a special um, thanks to Barney Pins, who sponsors our show, as well as Big Think Productions. Yes. And so that's going to be it for today. Um, if you've enjoyed the show, please like it on YouTube and then share it with your friends, um, as well as visiting our Facebook group. <sighs> Lots of fun conversation there. Uh, and remember, our next virtual sew-in is going to be Friday, October 16th. That's going to be 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. That's also going to be broadcast on YouTube and available for replay. Our one from September is up there. Um, admittedly, the first 25 minutes is me sitting there looking concerned that no one has joined me yet because I <laughs> hadn't quite figured out how to share the right link. No, uh, and then the next, <laughs> and then the next few minutes are me going, "It's not working," and then you get the audio feedback, which was really enjoyable. Yeah, we had a lot of reverb happening. Yeah, so, but exactly. we should have all that stuff because I out. opened like five windows of the same thing, that causes a problem. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> So, in addition to those, you can also, also catch my podcast tip to be a square every Friday. Uh, and let's see. Don't forget to watch our video. Oh. Like us on Facebook, um, on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Like us on all those things. Share us everywhere you can on, you know, social media stuff. And uh, if you're not sure about any of that stuff, you can always find more details on the stitchtvshow.com. Uh, and again, thanks to our partners in this. And tune in next month for more Quilting Chat with Friends.